I would now like to invite our panel members, Dr. Sri Abdul Wahid Omar, PCEO of Maybank, Dr. Sri Jamaluddin Ibrahim, the MD and PCEO of Axiata, and Tan Sri Liu Ki Sin, CEO of SP Satya, for our panel discussion. And I'd also like to invite to the stage Mr. Sridharan Nair, Managing Partner Elect of PwC, who will moderate this session. Very good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for remaining in the hall. I know you've been seated for the last uh, couple of hours. Uh, appreciate you still being here for the next uh, session of this uh, uh, called Malaysia ASEAN's Multinational Marketplace. Now, we've had uh, our chief salesman for the country, Prime Minister, speaking in the morning. We subsequently had two distinguished ministers who also call themselves as salesperson uh, speaking uh, about Malaysia and our economic transformation and a little bit about ASEAN as well. Uh, we now have the pleasure of having uh, uh, Minister uh, of uh, our Minister of International Trade and Industry, Dr. Sri Mustafa Mohammad, with us on the panel, together with three distinguished CEOs who have operations in ASEAN, uh, Dr. Jamal at the end, uh, Tan Sri Lee, SP Satya, and Dr. Wahid from, from Maybank. Now, whilst we're going to, before we deep dive, perhaps we get into a few uh, questions just to warm us all up. And I would like to ask the panel, perhaps starting with uh, Dr. Jamal right at the end, a few uh, favorites of yours. If you could just tell us quickly in a couple of words your favorite Asian food. Uh, Asian food. Uh, nasi lemak. Nasi lemak. Okay. Tan Sri. Chicken rice. Chicken rice. Tan Sri. Nasi kerabu. Nasi kerabu. <laughs> nasi padang. Nasi padang. Okay, well, interesting to note that none of those were actually outside you know Malaysia. All of those were Asian food. Do you know what nasi kerabu is? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, next question. Favorite Asian ASEAN holiday destination? Starting with Dr. Sri Wahid. Kota Kinabalu. Kota Kinabalu. Langkawi. Langkawi? Sorry, Bali. Bali? <laughs> uh, Phuket and Bali. Phuket and Bali. Okay, thank you very much. Now, we know a little bit about their personal favorites. Now, let us just perhaps get into a little bit more about uh, what we have talked about this morning. Uh, in the morning, we heard from Dr. Sri Idris Jala about Malaysia's transformation results, which have been off to a good start. Uh, it's providing a conducive environment for companies to transform into regional and even global multinationals. Uh, Dr. Sri Mustafa, my first question is to you. Uh, our services sector has actually seen significant liberalization since 2009. And uh, in fact, you, you've mentioned in your slides just now that in 2011, the GDP stats show that close to 60% is attributable to the services sector. How do you think the liberalization has helped Malaysia be a more competitive economy regionally? Firstly, uh, investment is about sentiment, investor perception. At the macro level, if uh, people have uh, confidence in the country, the way it is being managed, economic management, macroeconomic management, uh, that's very important. And similarly, when there's a perception that we're open to ideas, we're open to uh, market opening measures, for example, that is a powerful message that we've been delivering uh, in the last uh, few years, in the last uh, three, four years. So this is uh, uh, something that, that we believe uh, will continue going forward. We will uh, continue to uh, open up uh, the Malaysian market. Uh, of course, it's got to be run in stages. Uh, the capital market master plan and other plans that we have uh, has got in place a number of strategies, a gradual opening up of the Malaysian economy. So that's very important at the, at the general level. The specifics, of course, we have to go, go down to the ground. The seven, as an example, the 17 and the 27 odd that was uh, announced in May or so, 2009. And the job of MIDA, and my job is to go to the ground and, and talk to people, tell them. Uh, and this, especially this one, the 17, this is very substantial. Accounting, education, private healthcare, uh, these are very, we, we believe, these are very significant. Some might say that the one we announced three years ago, uh, in terms of number, yes, a lot bigger. But in terms of impact, uh, perhaps it's not as, as much. Yeah? Uh, but this one here, the 17, uh, we go into specifics, uh, and we are already getting interest uh, in terms of healthcare, for example, 
education, they're coming to uh, Iskandar and other places. So it is working. And yesterday, uh, the PM uh, made an announcement uh, during the uh, ATP uh, uh, function that we had uh, on Harriet Walk, which is uh, already coming to, uh, to Iskandar. So these are examples. Services are very important. And we talk about quality, it's about services. Manufacturing, unless you go high-end, high-tech, you know, research and development, uh, uh, it's not as, uh, as, as easy as services. And you, you go to Cyberjaya, yeah? you go to uh, MDAC, you talk to MDAC, you go to Cyberjaya. There's so many uh, companies there which are employing uh, professionals, graduates who are very skilled. So those are the kind of things that we need to concentrate, concentrate on. And all this uh, is about services. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, Dr. Sri Wahid, the next question is to yourself, sir. Uh, liberalization in the financial services sector has also seen the influx of uh, foreign players. Can you tell us how this has impacted Maybank? Well, let me perhaps make uh, three points. I think, firstly, uh, Maybank uh, is accustomed with competition. So, in fact, when we were set up in 1960, uh, Static Chartered uh, was already celebrating 100 years uh, in Malaysia. Uh, so, you know, you've seen uh, Maybank has been growing uh, with competition in the market. Uh, Malaysia is uh, very much um, a very liberal market, and, and I think not many people uh, acknowledge this. Uh, if you look at the global banks, HSBC, Standard Chartered, um, they all have a very strong presence here, and um, even the two Singapore banks, uh, OCBC, UOB, they're here. Uh, and you have uh, many others um, in this market. So, again, within that context, um, Competition, liberalization makes us uh, stronger. Uh, secondly, it is good to uh, open up the market uh, that uh, you bring in new players into the market so that you have the critical mass. Uh, I'm referring to uh, the areas of, say, Islamic banking, uh, where you had um, you know, a few years ago when we brought in uh, people like RRG, KFH, uh, Asian Finance Bank. So they provided additional. Uh, products to the market, they compete um, in the market, and, and again, uh, that has enabled the local banks to respond better, mm -hmm. uh, providing more products and services to the customers. Uh, the third point uh, I would like to make is in respect of the fact that liberalization works both ways. Uh, as much as we uh, have been open to other uh, investment in financial services in Malaysia, uh, Maybank, uh, CIMB, uh, and Public, and other banks have benefited uh, from the liberal policies adopted by our neighbours. So that's why Maybank has been able to uh, expand beyond Malaysia into Singapore, uh, Indonesia, uh, Philippines and other markets. Mm. So I think um, you know, with that context, uh, it has made us more competitive and it has enabled us to expand our operations beyond our shores. Thank okay. you. Thank you. In fact, uh, Prime Minister made the point about reciprocity, which is the same point you're making. We benefit from uh, the opening up of markets overseas as well. Uh, the next questions uh, are to Tan Sri Liu and Dr. Sri Jamal, perhaps Tan Sri Liu to start with. Uh, Dr. Sri Idris Jala used the term uh, catalytic when he talked about the economic transformation program in his uh, earlier presentation. And uh, how do you see SP Satya, how has SP Satya capitalized on the opportunities that have been presented under the ETP? Well, I think the first point from a developer's point of view is always land banking. Uh, the, under the ETP, the government's policy is to monetize a lot of the unused land. So with this ETP, we are able to tap into the government, the land bank, the beautiful land that is available in the Klang Valley. Without a beautiful land, especially location, we cannot create a world-class city. We need to shift our mindset during ordinary things in Malaysia to something that is extraordinary, something that we can put on par with cities of New York and London and Barcelona. So with this beautiful land bank that if we can get from the, from the federal government, of course through open tender, whatever system it's going to be, we are able to create something that's different in totality. And the second good thing about the ETP shows that tells the world that Malaysia is in business. We are serious about transforming the economy. Because of that, there's a massive influx of foreigners wanting to invest in our country, be it in the factories that we see a tremendous boom in Johor or buying properties from us. For years, we've been trying to sell properties overseas to foreigners. No success until this ETP came along. That means we are serious of transforming the country's economy. Because of this confidence, confidence that people want to invest in our country. For us, it's two major points for us. Okay, thank you. Dr. Jamal, the Exeter, sorry. 
Obviously, <coughs> we have gained uh, quite significantly from the uh, EPP's projects, um, Telcom in this case in Malaysia, uh, projects like uh, telematics, uh, projects like government health that uh, Telcom is very much involved together with actually another uh, operator, uh, projects uh, in the, uh, uh, <coughs> in the uh, payments, the, fortunately, many of these projects fall right into the area we are strong at in the telecommunication and IT. So yes, we have benefited quite significantly from that. Okay, thank you. Well, we've talked about uh, how the economic transformation program has provided the, the, the bedrock for Malaysian companies to, uh, to progress, such as uh, your companies. Uh, let's talk a little bit about going abroad and succeeding abroad. Uh, SP Satya has uh, recently enlarged its regional footprint uh, from Vietnam to Australia, Singapore, and I think more recently in Indonesia. Tan Sri Liu, can you tell us what is your company's strategy for expanding overseas and where do you see the opportunities to basically be? Well, <clears throat> the main point is very simple. As we showcase our Malaysian products to foreign investors, we felt that to strengthen our base in terms of what we can do, we should have presence in other countries too. So we adopt two. One is uh, in between ASEAN would be Singapore, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, and China, and hopefully in UK soon. The idea is cross-selling. As investors come and buy things from us in Malaysia, Malaysians are also actively seeking investment overseas. So if you can put them together in terms of cross-selling, I think it's a big market for Malaysian companies. We should no longer just think of ourselves as a small developer or small company operating in this country. We should think about cross-selling. What kind of services we can, we can sell, not only in properties, whatever services, cross-selling. People buy from us from overseas, and Malaysians also buy from so. If, if Malaysians buy through us, at least the profit comes back to a Malaysian-based company, not to a foreign-based company. <laughs> so we're actively seeking opportunities available in ASEAN, Singapore, of course Australia. The mature market will be Singapore, Australia, and hopefully in UK. But in the in ASEAN region, it's more Vietnam and, and Singapore. Okay. We'd be happy to find you both ways. <laughs> <laughs> So an immediate business opportunity there. Uh, Axiata and Maybank have had longer presence in international markets perhaps relative uh, to SP Satya and have been very successful at that too. Uh, Dr. Sri Jamal, perhaps what would you say is the secret to Axiata's success in the region? Um, well, the, uh, <clears throat> I guess to some extent I can give you a, a pretty motherhood kind of answers. Uh, uh, obviously we have the right vision, right strategy, right management and perhaps right ex execution. But to be more specific, in, in, I'll give you examples where uh, it's very specific to us. In, for example, the vision, our vision is very bold and you know, it's, a, it's a big stretch in it to become a regional champion. We, in fact, we increase our expectation ourselves uh, tenfold so that you know, we are able to perform well and stretch ourselves. Uh, on the strategy, one of the biggest things we changed our strategy, you know, for the first one month or two uh, after the demerger from Telecom Malaysia, is to go 180% degrees uh, change on strategy from acquisition to nurturing our existing investment. I think that has helped us to focus instead of expanding rapidly while we don't have strong companies, we decided that let's strengthen our companies that we have first and then talk about expansion later. Of course, not necessarily in sequential uh, manner, but very much a high priority given to strengthening our management, uh, our, our operating companies. And uh, the last one is on management, where there are two aspects of it where we, we, we focus on. One is diversity. Second is what we call packaging of management. Uh, diversity meaning we believe strongly in, uh, we, we have a seven to one sort of um, uh, rule of thumb where in all the countries we operate, we want to have about 70% of the uh, management team come from local, uh, in Sri Lanka, or so, uh, Bangladeshi, or so Singaporeans, so or Malaysians, uh, or in the rest of your countries. 20% will come from the group, so we like to see people moving around, and we did a lot of that last year. People move around from Malaysia to Indonesia, Indonesia to uh, Cambodia, and uh, some Bangladesh to Malaysia, and so on and so far, and 10% from anywhere in the world. We like a mix to me that's a good combination. So diversity is important. The last part is what we call packaging, meaning we like to build a team of uh, stars. No, we don't like superstars too much because they tend to have a lot of roles, right? trying to handle that. We like to have a team of stars, so we call it a packaging. How, uh, so in other words, it's not a, when we have a vacancy in one position in one country, it's not about finding the right best people, finding out about the best people who can operate and has a team with the rest and complement each other. 
So that's maybe perhaps some of the reasons for success.